Hello guys, good morning and welcome to the show. Today is March 15th, 2023, a Wednesday. Thank you for tuning in, I'm glad to have you guys here. Now in the title of my show, but what can happen next? A lot of times you read the titles, you know, on a show. And uh, you wait all, you watch all the way through the show and you never see anything that had to do with the title. You know, it's what you wanted to know. You've seen the title. You, you, maybe the title said, what's going to happen next? And you're like, looking all the way through, they never tell you. I want to get right to it. What could happen next? Because this thing's gone global. What could happen next is a freeze of the financial system. If too much money moves around too fast and, and it starts to involve derivatives which is known as a, a financial weapon of mass destruction. In other words, if the derivatives in the derivatives market start to pop, 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 and there's over a quadrillion. Do you know how much a quadrillion is? It's, it's, it's not a thousand billion. It's a thousand, it, a quadrillion is a thousand trillion. That's what we have in derivatives out there. Nominal value derivatives. An awful lot of them are in credit default swaps, things like that. Right? And basically what it is is they've compounded money. They've added leverage to the system over a period of years, starting in 2008, big time. Well, what caused the crisis in 2008 was leverage. So what did they do? They doubled down, doubled down, doubled down, doubled down. And now we got leverage up to the up up to past our nose, can't even breathe. Over a quadrillion dollars worth of leverage in the system. And this is what's causing all this volatility. It's pressure. I call it. I'll call it pressure. In the system. That pressure makes the system want to swing between deflation and in it and inflation, in sudden shifts. That pressure of all the leverage. It wants the system wants to deleverage, but they can't let it. Can't. And so, what's going to happen next? What could? I'm going to say what could happen next. I'm not going to say it's going to happen next. What could happen next? Big question mark. The system could freeze. Have to, they'd have to close the markets. Too many banks would fail too suddenly. Too many derivatives would basically deleverage within the system suddenly. And all financial transactions are... I mean, right now, while we speak, the banks are getting... Uh, they're, getting they're hauling back liquidity. They're not doing what's called interbank lending near as much. It's shutting off. That's how money moves around within the system. Money stops moving, the system freezes. The system, I'm talking about the whole global financial system, freezes. And you say, well, Glenn, what does that mean, the fi financial system? Well, what it would look like to you is nothing will work. Because... If the banks aren't going to extend credit to one another, why are they going to extend it to you? And everything that you do in your day operates off of credit. Your your credit cards. I call credit cards. They're extending you credit. The banks aren't going to extend credit to one another. Why are they going to extend credit to you? So suddenly your credit cards don't work. What about your debit card? Well, the banks have to lock all... all the banks will, if the system freezes, the banks will have to lock all funds within the system. They might let you access a small amount at the ATM machine, but they will limit it. I don't know, maybe $50 a month. You don't know. How long will a credit freeze last? It'll last until the regulators of the system unfreeze it. Now, think about this for a minute. Everything stops functioning within the financial system. 
your debit card doesn't work at the store. Now, the stores will all have a big sign on the front that says, We only take cash today. Sorry! They might not even open. For cash sales, they might not even open. Businesses will just close. People will be sent home. The system will start shutting down. All but essential services will run. For now, essential services will run. If they don't unfreeze it, well, a countdown clock is going even, even on essential services. That means the government, who's ever in charge, will be in a panic. You, thought, you think it was a panic when, when, when they were all having their closed-door meetings on the, on the weekend when, when, when uh, <clears throat> Silicon Valley Bank went down? You think that was a panic for Janet Yellen and, you know, all the crew? <laughs> and they came up with something. Well, this would be a bigger panic. This would be... They would, ha they would have to be in their closed-door meetings and they would have to be popping pills like, uh, like uh, Rolaids. And, and, <laughs> and because their stomachs would be hurting them. Because they would be so upset and concerned. Do you think they're going to do something? Of course they're going to do something. They're not going to leave the system. If the system freezes, if the banking system freezes, of course they're going to do something. They're going to unfreeze it. Now the next question is, how long would this freeze last? It could very well be an overnight thing. So you guys might not. If it's really fast... You guys might not even see it much or notice it. Might freeze for like 12 hours. You guys wouldn't even notice it then. Depends on how quick that they can come to a resolution. But what's their resolution going to be? Oh, it's very obvious. You guys should know. The resolution is going to be to create a whole new swack of money. And re make the system resolvent again. It's the only solution they can come up with. The only thing they can actually do. But it's a big thing that they can actually do. And it will unfreeze the system. But they have to do it. They have to do it. Or all of all of their... See, it comes right down to it now at this point. when the system, If the system does freeze, all of their necks are going to be on the line as well as ours. Not literally, but I mean, yeah, maybe... You know, I mean, who wants to live in a world where everything comes to a stop and the world goes crazy? After the world goes crazy, if everything comes to a stop and they let it go too far and the world goes crazy, then you can't restore it back again at that point. You've lost it. And that's why I say it's a countdown clock Once the system, if the system freezes. And believe me, that's what a total meltdown of the system is. The system can't operate if it has a total meltdown of the financial system. And I mean, we must be right on the verge. I mean, these, these, the people out there who control the system right now, they're watching it spiral out of control right now, and they don't know how far it's going to go. They don't know if it'll freeze. I mean, we've never been through this anymore, bef before, I should say. Now, I'm talking about a system freeze, and... Possibly some people within the financial system right now are saying, oh, hogwash system can never freeze. And other ones out there are saying, yeah, it could, it could. They just don't know because it's never happened before. Just because something's never happened before, you can use your logic and common sense and understand that it could happen. You know? It's just logical. I mean, you got over a quadrillion dollars worth of derivatives products. Bigger than the entire financial system itself. And these products are relying upon interest rates. Things like credit default swaps and things like that. They rely upon interest rates and, and, and stuff. A lot of them are like insurance in the financial system. And they're never called on to pay out. Because the, what, their, what their insurance against never happens. But if it does happen, then all of a sudden there, there's a massive amount of derivatives just go pop, 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 pop. 
That's why they're called a, a financial weapon of mass destruction. They're just like they're just like these nuclear weapons out there. And they can have just as big an effect upon the system. Of course, they have to fix all these things. So, so what does all this mean? I've talked for, what, five, 10 minutes? I don't know. 10 minutes about all this. What does it all mean, guys? It all means that not only should you guys be worried about the, the banks and getting your money out and stuff like that, you'd be worried about your, your deposits and everything. Can the FDIC cover it and all this kind of stuff? But there's more to worry about. There's to worry about the dollar itself. Because if the financial system or anything free, and even if it doesn't freeze up, they're still going to have to inject tremendous amounts of money to fix the problems that are being created right now. And this is going to have a very negative effect upon your, upon your dollar. And if the financial system freezes up, the amount of money that they would have to create to, uh, to lubricate it and get it going again, they would, you'll have a, almost a 30% haircut on your dollar overnight. And then we'd probably go right into 50% yearly inflation. From 8% to 50%. And this is a hidden tax. This is what they really want. Kyle Bass said it years ago, and he was in with them all. You know, he was rubbing shoulders with all the big shots and everything, and he he, he let it slip, and he said, they're just going to kill the dollar. He said it quite a while ago, and it hasn't played out quite yet, but ultimately this is the final conclusion. And so you got to get your money into hard, tangible assets, and you got to do it fast. Things that have no counterparty risk. Be your own central bank. Be your own bank. Period. Anyway, I'm going to move on. We're going to take a look at the markets now. Uh, Mar Can you believe this? Credit Suisse default risks. Soars. You know? So what are they doing with the money? They're hauling it out of Credit Suisse and they're putting it in some place they consider safe. Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank's seeing a flood of deposits. Because they say they want to go after... Uh, uh, you know, a flight to safety. <laughs> safety. Deutsche Bank safety. Now, you guys have been watching my channel for years. You know that this is the biggest joke in the world. <laughs> but there you go. And it's, it's, it's the same thing that's happening over here. We got people pulling money out of their small banks here in the United States and putting money into bigger banks. Well, see, this is what they're doing. They're pulling their money out of Credit Suisse and putting it into the Deutsche Bank because Deutsche Bank's big. And they want to get into something that's too big to fail. Well, Deutsche Bank is that. Too big to fail. But so are these big American banks like J.P. Morgan and, and uh, Bank of America and so on. Wells Fargo and all this kind of stuff. Putting it into these bigger banks, from the smaller banks to the bigger banks. But then this thing could cycle around to the bigger banks if the problem continues, more fear continues. And the whole thing, the whole system could lock up. Severe damage. Uh, taking a look at uh, our, our, our silver today, it's up 30 cents. 21.98. Uh, still, guys, still this is still extremely low. I mean, we were at 24 bucks just a couple months ago and nothing was happening. And people were buying then. It's two dollars cheaper than that with all this going on. Twenty-two bucks. Something wrong here. Something wrong with this picture. And I don't. And when something's that much wrong with a picture, it doesn't stay that way. It's like you go to the store and you see canned milk on sale for thirty-five cents, and there's still some there. Something wrong with this picture. Better grab a few cans of that before it's gone. 
And that's 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 the thing, guys. <laughs> Something wrong with this picture here. It's way too low. Considering what's going on, considering there's hard the supply is so constrained now, and the, and the silver and gold dealers and stuff are having a hard time keeping up with supply right now, and we're practically in a shortage of the real physical metal. Yet the paper price is staying down this low. And we got banks popping off left and right and demand is going through the roof. And we need this stuff for industry and, and, and it's going to be, you're going to have two sides here. Industry there grabbing on one side of the silver bar and saying, it's mine, we can't produce iPhones without it. And on the other side of that thing is, is, the, is the investor out there saying, it's mine, I had it first, I grabbed it first. And the two of them yanking on it. Well, the government will settle this issue. They'll say, industry, you get the silver, and and you guys out there, you investors, now you're going to have to have a special license to be an investor in silver. You're going to have to apply for it. And you're going to have to go through a, a waiting process of, I don't know, four years? <laughs> oh, but we'll give that license to all of our friends for free, and immediately they can still continue to buy silver. But, oh, but by the way, that license is going to cost $500,000 a year into our government coffer. I mean, I'm just making this stuff up as I go along, but this is the way the government functions. They screw you over and they give it to all their friends and buddies for free. You know, they sit on the shake hand behind the back rooms, behind the scenes and everything. Crooked to the core. And this is why we're in this mess. We're in this mess because they are so crooked. They're as crooked as a... Okay, you ever seen a snake that's been run over on the freeway and he's been sitting out in the sun for about 10 days and, and, he, and he's lost all of, all of his... That's how crooked they are. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's move on here. Uh, take a look at gold today. <laughs> oh, the gosh, this system is so nuts. 2260 up for gold, 1926. Busting a move. Taking a look at uh, the uh, cryptocurrency today. Bitcoin at 24,691. And Ethereum is at 1648. Went up and tested a new level. Uh, it went up and touched. And that fell back last night, you know. It was on tear. I think it went up to, what, 28,000 or something? Oh, I can't remember. It might have been 26 or something. It went up high. Went up and then it, boop, and it touched that level and it backed off. Back. Way. And now it's been hovering in around 24,500 in around that range. But it's it's taken a big leap up in the last couple of days because it is one of these assets. No counterpart. If you have the private keys, no counterparty risk. Again, it's not denominated in dollars. And it's so it's one of these assets. This is why I say this right here, cryptos. Bitcoin and all the other cryptos that go along with it. What is it? Some 30,000 of them or something. They are uh, out of the dollar, just like gold and silver are. This stuff doesn't move with the dollar. Only ones that move with the dollar are ones like Tether and, and USD coin and so on. They move with the dollar. But all the others, they're, not, they're out of the dollar. These are pegged to the dollar. You know, like Tether is pegged to, to the dollar. That's why it's one dollar. But all these other ones, like Bitcoin, it doesn't move with the dollar. It's 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 non-dollar denominated. So you're getting out of the dollar. So it's not affected by... And, and all of these assets, gold, silver, cryptos, they all can keep up with your cost of inflation. As the dollar, as inflation tears your dollar to pieces, your dollar is always going to be worth a dollar. But what you can purchase with it. And in, in, in just a mere 24 months from now, the dollar might only be purchasing 20 cents worth of what it purchases now. This is what I'm getting at. So that means your dollar is actually 20 cents. But no, it's still a dollar. But it only purchases 20 cents worth of value. And by that time... Silver might have went up four times higher than it is now, or five times higher, saving your purchasing power if you invest now. 
You just hang on to your dollars. Your dollars will still be worth dollars. And this is them moving into treasuries and stuff right now. Is still they're they're jumping from the frying pan into the fire. They're taking their money for a little bit higher yield out of the bank and buying into the U.S. Treasuries because Treasury yields are up a little bit. And what what happens? Still denominated in dollars. And so when the dollar loses value, it's going to still lose value too. And that's where the big money's going. The big money's not going going into. And these are small markets in comparison to the U.S. Treasury market, which is probably at least 10 times bigger than the crypto market and, and uh, probably 30 times bigger than the, I'm just guess, guesstimating at this. But I know it's way bigger, the Treasury market. And so, but it's dollar denominated. And so if that amount of money had a float into cryptos, gold and silver, these would have went up, silver would have went up a lot more than just a dollar, one dollar. It would have doubled. And if that money had a float into cryptocurrency, Bitcoin right now would be $60,000 overnight. The money that's flowing into the U.S. Treasury market. But no, it's flowing into the treasury market. They're, they're still chasing dollars. But when the real hyperinflation starts to hit, they're going to pour out. And they're, then they will go into these markets because it's the only escape. I already know this. You guys should know this. This is the only escape. So when it really gets bad for the dollar, when the real inflation starts to hit, the serious inflation... Then they'll pour out, and they'll do it suddenly, and they'll do it all at once, and all of them will chase these few assets, the cryptos, gold, and silver. And this is where you're going to get your big-time rush of money coming in. This is just starting, and this is still on the ground, all of it. The gold, silver, cryptos, it's all still on the ground floor. And, I mean, I can't begin to tell you guys, if you want to be able to have a little bit of money to eat with, ultimately, looking down the road, looking maybe a few years, a year, two years out or something, three years out, if you want to still have, because food's going to go up so high, you're going to take all your wages just to buy a bag of groceries. And then how are you going to pay your rent? How are you going to pay your, right? That's things are going to go so high. Where your investments in these things now will allow you to be able to spread out your income enough to be able to go out and, 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 and buy a car on the cheap. There's going to be some bargains out there. Man, bargains. If you got gold and silver, be able to, you'll be able to live as good as now, maybe better, where all your friends and neighbors are going to be like sitting on their hands. You'll be able to go out and look for a, your, your, look for a car or, look, or go out and look for a cheap piece of land or you'll have the wherewithal to be able to take advantage of some of the bargains that are going to be out there. And yeah, there will be bargains because everybody else is going to be starving to death. I mean, it's going to be so bad, people will sell you their soul for, for a bowl of rice, for crying out loud. And you think there ain't going to be bargains out there? How are you going to buy these bargains if, if you're in U.S. dollars? Because it's a dollar that's going to zero. Guys, get, you got to get your head around it. It's hard to get your head around this. But it's happening. It's going to happen really fast now from this point forward. Because we finally got to a marker. In all of this. Say, so Glenn, what's the marker? The marker was the deflationary spike event that I've been talking about for years. We're finally in it. <laughs> Here it is. You know? And why I call it a deflationary spike event is the system out there is deflating right now at an amazingly fast rate. And if they don't stop it, it's like a spike. It'll cleave everything right in half if they don't stop it. they got to stop it. It's digging in deeper by the day. It's going to take more and more money to stop it 
the longer they wait. So the faster they can stop it, it won't go as deep. Heaven forbid it gets deep enough to puncture, like a spike going into a tire. Okay, it's puncturing different layers of the tire right now. Heaven forbid it puncture that final layer into the derivatives market and blow, we get a blowout. My, my gosh, this is dangerous what's going on right now. You guys are all in danger, actually. All of us. They've created a financial system that's a, that's a time bomb. Uh, taking a look today at the Dow Jones, it's only down 545 points. Now, I told you the marker on this where I think the Fed will really get serious is when this market goes below 28,000. That's at 31,500 right now. It's 567 points down today. Uh, taking a look at uh, the S&P 500, it's down 58 points at 3,861. Taking a look at oil. Now, this is a big tell, oil. Oil looks out ahead, and it says, how much are people going to be using oil out there? For driving back and forth to work and whatever. Oh, Joe just lost his job. Well, he ain't going to be using much oil anymore. He's going to be sitting at home. You know? And so it looks forward. It's a forward-looking indicator as far as I'm concerned. You see the price of oil go down? It means oil saying, hey, there's not going to be as much economic activity coming up right away. When we see oil go down $3.67 in just one day, over 5%, what's that telling you guys? That oil is saying that there's not going to be as much economic activity going on worldwide. That's what oil's telling us. It's screaming it at us. Bonds and rates today. We're looking at fallen yields. There's probably an awful lot of money moving into this and coming out of the banking system and saying, well, why am I going to keep my money in the bank if I'm going to only get nothing? in such a shaky banking system when I can put it in something that's guaranteed US Treasuries so they're buying in and trying to get that yield that uh, probably buying in heavy of things like the uh, well, look here it can get almost 5% on a, U a US 3 month Treasury buying in locking into these bonds but still dollar what I'm telling you guys still dollar denominated and yeah, it is a better idea than keeping your money in the bank. Because they're never going to default on U.S. Treasuries. But what are they going to be worth? If the dollar takes a 30% hit overnight because the system freezes up or something like that. And then we move into an era where inflation starts to really run away. The dollar's still, what they're going to be worth is still going to be worth a dollar. But what can it buy? When all of these commodities and things, gold, silver, cryptos, things like that, have all went up, doubled and tripled in value, the dollar's still worth a dollar, you should have bought them, and then let your then you would have had triple the value. It's like doubling and tripling your money. Rather than just sitting on your hands on in dollars. And that's what they do. When they're locking into these treasuries, they're sitting on their hands in dollars. Uh, hoping for a very small payout of less than five percent but there you go it's and it is better it's better than the money in the bank because money in the bank you could have be uh, suddenly overnight reliant upon the FDIC because your banks just went under and now the FDIC is is basically holding your and your money's only as good as the FDIC and I know the other night I said that they'll probably backstop the FDIC, and I tend to think they will, still, but there's no guarantee, and the FDIC only has $200 billion. and that means they're going to be cleaned out overnight, unless the government backstops the FDIC, when these banks start to really hit them with, okay, we need a whole bunch of money, we need a whole bunch, and they're all coming at the FDIC, you got to pay out our depositors, and there goes the FDIC, unless the government backstops it. I think they'll backstop it. But but see, then you're, that's a counterparty risk comes in. So your bank goes down, 
Now all of a sudden you're looking to the FDIC to make you whole. That's your counterparty, the FDIC. You have to be have faith and trust in them. Do you trust them? Question for you. If you're going to stay in the bank and keep that money in, your bank goes under, and suddenly you find that you now you're looking at the FDIC, and you're saying, are you going to give me my money back? And you have to trust them. Do you trust them? Dollar index, 104.98, and going up today. Okay, listen, guys. These are very turbulent times right now. Things are happening so fast. I'm barely able to keep up. I'm just, my eyes are in the news, scanning the news. What's next? Flash! News break! It's like that. Five times a day. You don't know what's going to happen. Another uh, drone dropped into the ocean and the Russians are mad and blah, blah, blah. And America's mad and, and everybody's going mad and another bank just collapsed. Oh, no, what, what bank collapsed now? Oh, no, this one? Oh, oh okay. And then well, the government going to bail it out? Oh, oh, it just it goes on and on and on. It's just every hour. It's hard to keep up, guys. Okay, I'm keeping up for you, but it's it's like, Wow. How more interesting can this get? Well, I'll tell you what. If the whole thing freezes up, you'll find out how interesting it can get. And, and what a mess they've created. Look to your politicians. Thank them for destroying your life. And uh, the people out there are like, Thank you very much for destroying our lives. <laughs> Uh, and then the politicians say back, well, you're very welcome, and we'll destroy your lives much more so very soon. <laughs> we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.